Hello YouTube. So today's video is going to be about using uh, MOSFETs as a switch, both P-channel and, and N-channel types. So I guess you could see right here is the circuit which I built. This is an N-channel MOSFET and this is a P-channel MOSFET. And these are both set up to be used as a switch to control these two LEDs. So before I, I show the circuit working, I think I should show the variable MOSFET using it as a switch. So a MOSFET is a type of transistor. It is actually called a, a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. And there are two types, N-channel and P-channel types. Uh, and uh, regardless of what type the MOSFET is, they're all set up like this. You can see this is the, the TO220 package and it's set up to have gate, drain, and source, which are the three pins of the MOSFET. And that's always the same. This right here is a IRF4905 P-channel MOSFET, but in an N-channel MOSFET, such as a, the Z44 ends right here, which I'm using in the circuit, these just look exactly the same. So to actually use a MOSFET as a switch, you have it set up like this right here. Uh, re remember that it has a gate drain and source, and that corresponds on the schematic part for N-channel and P-channel types. Notice the difference is for the N-channel, the source has an arrow pointing this way. For the P-channel, it points the other way. And to use them as a switch, they actually both can be used as switches, but they work differently. You can see this is a similar looking circuit on both sides, but the polarity of it is reversed because in N channel, you want it switching on the negative side of the load. So this is your load represented as this resistor on this type and this type. So in our circuit, that load is these LEDs. but uh, of course, these are power MOSFETs. They can handle up to 49 amps, so this could be a much larger load. But anyway, you have your load here, and it goes on the N-channel type. It goes from your voltage source for the powering the load to through the load to the ground of the load. So this is on the negative side. That's why it's N-channel MOSFET. So it is on the negative side of the load. And the, the negative side of the load connects through the drain, through the source, and this is the ground. So when the MOSFET is switched on, current can go through VCC, through the load, to ground. And of course, when the MOSFET is off, it can't because it just stops here at the MOSFET. It acts as a switch. And you may ask how, it, how it's switching, and that's because you have VG right here. When VG is high with respect to VS, the MOSFET is on. When VG is low with respect to VS, it's off. So if VG is, is high, then it's on. If it's low, then it's off. And that's really, it's, it's the voltage in between the gate and the source, but the source is connected to ground. This is your common ground. So this ground will be held between your control circuitry, if you have one, uh, this doesn't really have a control circuitry at all. But if you have control circuitry, the ground for VG will be the same as the ground for the load. So that's your N channel MOSFET. And what we are using is the IRF Z44N. That is this one right here. And it's this stuff. And there's a data sheet for it over there. And also we have the P-channel MOSFET, and what I'm using is the IRF4905. That is this one right here. And you can see it looks exactly the same, except you are switching from the positive side. So this is the positive with respect to the load, this is positive, and then it's negative. So you're switching the positive wire connecting to the load. And it is the opposite for VG. If VG is high, then it's off. If it's low, then it's on. Of course, if VG is high, then it's the same as VS, so it's off. If it's low, then 
then there's a potential difference between the two, so then it's odd. Okay, so let's actually show the circle which we built. So we've talked about this, and of course, let me explain again, this is the the n-channel MOSFET and the p-channel MOSFET. So this is switching from the negative side of the LED. So your LED has your positive going here, it goes through a resistor, which is just the current limit for the LED. Then it goes through the LED, and if you can see it, the LED, the negative end of the LED is, is connected to the drain of the MOSFET. You see right there, this is the drain. And then this is the source, which is connected to the ground. So for the LED to be on, the drain and the source have to be connected, and that's done by connecting the gate to positive. And one thing of note is that if I touch this, yeah, you can see it kind of flickers on. This is actually functioning as an, an electroscope because there's charge in my body. And yeah, if I squeeze it tight enough, it can turn on and it stays on and it flickers on and off. So it's actually de 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 detecting the charge in my body. But of course, if we want it to turn off, we could just connect it to ground and it's off. If we want it to turn on all the way, connect it to positive and it's on. And one thing of note is that if I disconnect it from positive, it stays on. That's because the MOSFET acts as a capacitor. You can see here's the data sheet for the ZRF, the Z44N. This is the gate and this is the other stuff. So it kind of acts as a capacitor. It actually says it somewhere here. The capacitance in the number of picofarads. And the current that, is, that the MOSFET is consuming at the gate is very, very, very low. So that means that the MOSFET could basically just be kept on by the capacitor. Some types of computer memory actually work like this, where you just have a floating gate MOSFET. That's how like flash drives and stuff work, because they just leave the MOSFET gate floating and it just stays there. Uh, also notice is that if I disconnect power, then I reapply power, it stays on. So it, it doesn't really care about whether power is applied. to save its state. But of course, if you don't want it to have the same state, you could just wire a resistor to ground. You could have a pull down resistor and that could just stay off like that. Okay. So that's the N-channel MOSFET as a switch. And here's the P-channel MOSFET, the IRF4905. And ignore this transistor right here, it's not doing anything. Uh, this one works in a similar way. You can see if I touch it, the floating gate, it works as an electroscope. And if I connect it to positive, oh look, it's off. And that's because it's the reverse. Uh, remember, if VG is high, it's off. If VG is low, it's on. So VG is high, so it's off. Now the now the gate voltage we're going to set it to low and it's on of course it works the same if i disconnect it now it's it stays on even though this is loading and of course we could disconnect power from the circuit so this circuit is not powered at all it's like a flash drive that's stowed in your drawer and it's not connected to anything of course if i plug it back in it turns on it remembers the state that it's in so yeah, that's MOSFETs and how you could use them as a switch. Also, these MOSFETs, all of them, they have a data sheet with them. So this is for the Zero 444N. And there's another one for the 4905, but I don't have that one printed out right here. It has some stuff you might want to notice is that this is the maximum voltage drain to source voltage is 55 volts or weight. Yeah, the maximum voltage of this is 55 volts, the drain. And the maximum current at the drain is 49 amps. So if you want any uh, high current MOSFET, 
you need to make sure that it can handle the drain source uh, current that's high enough. And this is the resistance drain to source is 17.5 milliohms. So if you want a, a load which consumes more current, it's gonna have less resistance, which means more heat is going to be dissipated through the MOSFET. So you have to keep that in mind as well. These MOSFETs, I'm just using them with LEDs, so they're not getting warm at all. But if you're using them on a larger load, which you probably would for the MOSFET this big, you would need a heat sink on them. And that would look something like, something like this. This is a circuit that I'm trying to make. It's, a, it's actually a motor controller using MOSFETs. You can see that I made a, like a PCB for it. But anyway, it has these two types of MOSFETs set up in an H-Bridge motor controller configuration and it's meant to control large motors, large uh, DC brush motors, so it has big heat sinks on them so the MOSFETs can stay cool. I'm still working on the circuit I made. Uh, I, 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 I actually have shown it in a video I made about my robot. Yeah, I have, so if you want to see that, go watch that. But here is just how the MOSFETs are set up. And there's some other stuff you want to see in the data sheet. These are the absolute maximum ratings, so just pay attention to these. Also notice is that the the drain current goes down the hotter it gets, so it's more imperative to keep it cool. And yeah, it also goes through the electrical characteristics. As I mentioned before, the MOSFET has an an internal capacitance. And yeah, there's some other stuff. This is just kind of very technical information that even if you're an electrical engineer, you probably won't let really use. But yeah. And there's the drain to source voltage curves. So, yeah, I, I, I think I went over pretty much anything about how you use a MOSFET as a switch. This is just a basic video about it. I hope that it has helped you uh, make MOSFET circuits. Uh, these can be quite confusing, so I hope you've learned something from this video, and see you next time.